So let's debunk this real quick. Investigation. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Okay, let's get into it, Jesse we Weber. Told you just the other day, right here on Sidebar, that the attorney who filed one of these bombshell lawsuits against Sean Diddy Combs on behalf of his client, a former Diddy producer named Rodney Jones, would likely be filing another suit against Combs' son, Christian, and that has just happened. Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact, the yacht incident, which we're going to get into, was mentioned in Jones' lawsuit against Diddy, with Watch Jones this. claiming in the complaint that he had personal knowledge that Christian drugged and sexually assaulted a woman. And a footnote was included that a complaint would be forthcoming. Now, at the time, I was wondering if Jones would be the one suing Christian. After all, he already sued Christian's brother and Diddy's other son, Justin. But I was struggling to figure out what would be his cause of action against Christian. Well, it turns out that Jones is not suing Christian. It is actually the woman who was allegedly assaulted by Christian, and she is being repped by Jones's lawyer. I will explain. It just so happens that Jones's lawyer, who represents Little John or Little Ron or Little Bob or whatever the fuck, is representing the woman also. So we can prepare for her lawsuit to say similar things as his lawsuit because they're repped by the same lawyer. So first, this development comes almost two weeks after Diddy's homes in Miami. Because it would look crazy if he also filed against them for the shit that she's filing against the son for. Because that would just look crazy. Then she couldn't do it because he did it. So, because you can't, one person, person number one, Rodney Jones, can't sue the son for something and then the woman sue the son for the exact same thing, and they both be represented by the same lawyer. So, they're represented by the same lawyer, but one is suing for something that little Rod, little the, the fucking Jones said. Berated by Homeland Security investigators. It's part of a sweeping Not sex rocket science. investigation by the Southern District of New York, or at least that's what's being reported, that's what sources from law enforcement are indicating. Now, Diddy's two sons, Justin and Christian, they were seen in handcuffs outside Stop. of their L.A. home during the raid. They Damn. weren't under arrest. They were merely detained while officers were assessing the situation and going into the home. But Diddy, Justin, and Christian, they have all been named in these very big lawsuits. Right. But remember, that is civil. That is the civil arena. Money None grab. Of them have been arrested or charged with any crime related to this apparent criminal hmm. investigation. Wonder why. But our analysts here on Sidebar expect that at least one arrest will be coming soon. But now we fast forward to Thursday, when attorney Tyrone Blackburn, the man already representing Rodney Jones. Keep that in mind, Tyrone Blackburn, already representing Lil Rodney. Filed a civil complaint on behalf of his client, Grace O'Markey. Hmm. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her last name, but I believe it is O'Markey. Grace O'Markey in Los Angeles Superior Court accusing 26-year-old Christian Combs of drugging her and sexually assaulting her in December of 2022 when she was working in a charter boat. Two years ago, supposedly, and she wants to file a lawsuit now after Little Rodney already filed his by the same attorney. Okay, Blackburn. Hmm. Mark. So according to the lawsuit, Omarki says that she had been working as a steward, providing right. food and drinks on that yacht for a 12-hour period. Right. And she was 25 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. She believed that the trip would be a, quote, wholesome family excursion, but says it, quote, turned into a hedonistic environment, mm -hmm. even describing rampant drug use among sex workers mm -hmm. and celebrities who came on board. Mm -hmm. She believes that the alcohol on the yacht had been laced with drugs because she says women would have one drink and then almost immediately pass out or start falling over. She believed that the alcohol on the boat was laced with drugs because women would have one drink and immediately pass out or start falling over. Okay. This is, by the way, something that it was also alleged in Jones's lawsuit that oh. Combs would spike the drinks of different people. Okay. But focusing on Christian Combs. Well, Marky says that Christian Combs had been staying at a villa on the shore, but that he would come onto the yacht in the evening to party. Mm -hmm. And on December 28, 2022, Christian reportedly arrived very intoxicated, 
and then proceeded to pressure Armarki to take shots of tequila. Mm-hmm. She did. Christian. Oh. So, he came onto the yacht, pressured her to take shots of tequila, which she did. But shouldn't she be falling over immediately or uh, fainting? I do believe that's what she said. Uh, She believed all the drinks and the the alcohol on the boat was uh, laced with something because women kept drinking it. Women would take one drink and fall out or either faint. But she was able to take one shot, then take another shot because Christian supposedly forced her to take shots of tequila but yet she's still coherent, not falling over, and not fainted yet. But the alcohol is believed to be laced on the yacht. Okay, moving on. Lie number one, debunked. It allegedly tried to get her to drink more in the yacht's makeshift studio. Omarki alleges that Christian kissed her neck, kissed her face, as he groped her legs, breasts, and private areas. Right, and if she didn't tell him to stop beforehand that's not sexual assault that's him taking upon himself to kiss her neck and kiss her face and grope her just out of the blue even if that's wrong she didn't have a chance to say nope don't do that so as of right now he still has not committed a crime and they're both adults continue a marky reportedly told christian quote excuse me you don't touch my legs like that i'll move my legs where i want to if i want to do this then i will you don't touch my Legs like that. Oh, so after taking the shots that are laced, that are making women fall out and faint from the first drink, she's still coherent enough to say, excuse me, you don't touch my leg like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. If I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs. Excuse me, you don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. Well, did he move your legs somewhere? Because groping uh, don't involve moving your legs. So, what do you... Okay, anyhow. Well, Marky then says that she told Christian she couldn't stay with him unless it was approved by a supervisor. All- oh, then she tells him, I can't stay with you. Unless it's approved by a supervisor. These are mixed signals now, coming from her, anyhow. Of whom she knew would be asleep at the time, so this was a way for her to get out of the situation. Oh! Is this extra commentary that this man is adding? Because uh, Mr. Combs didn't know that she was saying, I can't stay with you unless it's approved by a supervisor. Mr. Combs didn't know that she was only saying that, supposedly. And who knows if that's the reason why she was saying it. Because she says that's the reason why she was saying it. Why didn't she just walk away or leave? Saying anything. You've already told him, you don't move my leg like that. I'll move my legs if I want to do this. Then you told him, I can't stay unless it's approved by a supervisor. So far, you have said nothing to this man indicating that you will not stay with him or do anything with him at all really in my opinion you just told him you'll move your legs where you want to if you want to do this okay so what's next well i can't stay with you unless it's approved by the supervisor (laughs) what okay she claims that christian said who can i talk to i'm gonna say i requested you right now well marky then says she responded with quote well you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing I can't stay with you unless you're, it's approved by a supervisor. Well, who do I talk to? Well, you got to take your hand off my ass to start with. So, you're telling this man that you can't stay with him unless it's approved by a supervisor. But then take his hand off your ass. But you can stay if it's approved by a supervisor and then he can touch your ass. Like, how does this work? Okay, this lady is full of shit. Omarki says that she tried to go back to her work, but Christian found her again. What? You tried to go back to your work after you told him you couldn't stay with him unless it was approved by a supervisor. And then you tried to go back to your work? Like, this don't even make sense. I her to find him a place to sleep for the night. 
So she ended up taking him to the cinema room for the yacht, oh. which doubled as a place for people to sleep. And she claims that is when Christian blocked her and groped her. Took off his clothes. But he already groped her and moved her leg and touched her butt. And she said she couldn't stay unless it was approved by a supervisor. So now she done took him to a room on the yacht. And now he done blocked the door and groped her. Well, what was he supposed to be thinking that he was supposed to be doing? You already told him you can't stay with him unless it's approved by a supervisor. And then you tell him... Uh, take your don't don't touch my butt, and then you take him to another room on the yacht. Freaking at that point, he's probably thinking, okay, well then I guess it's on and cracking because I asked you who I talked to, and then like this this shit tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. She says that she was able to fight him off until someone came in. Who could have came in? Cause you just said everybody was sleeping. And the only reason why you told him it had to be approved by a supervisor is because in your mind, you knew they were all asleep. So now all of a sudden you're able to fight him off until somebody arrives. So what, uh, whoever was asleep on the yacht, uh, first of all, he came onto the yacht to party, she said, in the afternoon. And women was taking drinks and falling out from the first drink. Uh, but now all of a sudden everybody's fucking sleeping on the boat. Uh, and, uh, when he just starts to grope her, now if somebody woke up, where'd everybody go that was at the fucking party and partying when he came on to the motherfucker? Like, this don't make sense. Now, the lawsuit goes on to say that Omarki told the yacht captain what happened the very next day. Why to tell him the next day? Why didn't you tell the person who busted in, uh, that woke up? You claim fucking you was able to fight him off till someone came in. That someone you didn't tell it to right then and there? Oh, okay, so you waited till the next day, okay, then told the yacht manager. Like, what the fuck is the yacht manager going to do about this man touching your butt? And this shit don't even... But he didn't believe her? Didn't do any sort of real investigation? I wouldn't have believed her either because... Everybody's supposedly drinking drinks, one drink and fainting, and you done drank vodka more than once, didn't faint, was coherent enough to tell somebody you'll move your leg where you want, then tell them you can't stay the night with them unless a supervisor approves it, freaking which is indicating that you're willing to stay the night with him, but only if a supervisor says so. Then you go to another room with him, freaking, and then supposedly fight him off until somebody woke up, who I guess everybody had already fainted at the party right away from their first drink, except for you. And then you fought him off till somebody came and didn't tell nobody. Like, the story, if you would have told me that story, and I was fucking on the yacht too, to know that you were lying, of course I wouldn't have fucking investigated. She like, says the captain retaliated against her for months after the alleged assault. How? Before ultimately firing her in How? of 2023. How do you retaliate? Now, for what? From her what would he retaliate for? For you telling him something happened to you? If he didn't believe you and didn't do an investigation, that means he don't give a damn. But he retaliate against... He gives a damn enough to retaliate against you for months, but not investigate it or even care when you told him. But then all of a sudden, I guess he must have thought about it again later and said, well, I'm going to retaliate against her because she told me this. Like, that don't even make fucking her sense. Account. Aside <laughs> from a potential other witness, right, the person that... Let me guess who the witness is. Little Rodney, right? We walked in on this. What proof is there that this happened? Well, she reportedly has photos of the bruises that she says were caused by this event with Christian Combs. Who's to say that's where those bruises even came from? It was two years ago. But she also claims that in that studio, during that first interaction at the time, was Rodney Jones, that former... Oh, wow. So Rodney, little Rodney was there. What a coincidence, ain't it? Little Rodney was in the studio when all this was happening. This is bullshit. Diddy music producer I mentioned. The one who is suing Diddy. He's known as Little Rod Jones. So Little Rodney Jones watched 
as he touched your leg, watched as you told him that he could you couldn't stay with him unless the supervisor said so. And Lil Rodney also watched you take shot after shot of vodka or tequila and don't faint or pass out. And Lil Rodney did what? Not shit? Oh, oh. Well, it sounds like Lil Rodney was a participant in, in it then. If it truly happened. Rodney is full of shit. Look at these glasses on him. You can't tell that this man is full of shit and just wants money. Look at him. He looks like a goddamn Bart Simpson with glasses. Remember, he had been basically living with Diddy while the two worked on his latest album, as we discussed. Right, the and let's and not to mention supposedly, a uh, fucking Puff Daddy took Little Rodney's fucking phone from him and recorded his own self doing all kinds of drugs and illegal shit. For hundreds of hours of footage. Cell phones don't hold hundreds of hours of footage, number one. And number two, why would a billionaire like Puff Daddy use Little Rodney's phone to record all his illegal fucking shit for hours upon hours of it? This shit is crazy, man. It don't even make sense. It's sidebars. It Jones don't. made multiple allegations against Diddy in his own lawsuit saying that there was rampant drinking... Drug use. There's nothing wrong with rampant drinking, little Rodney. I'm sorry. Central and and, and even then, depending on the drug, that might not have even been illegal. But you got to remember, too, if it's on a yacht, it's an open water. Where? Or in Diddy's like, parties, he claims that he was groped by Diddy, that he was the victim. Yeah, he said Cuba Gooding Jr. groped him. Yeah, well, prove that of sex trafficking as he was forced to engage in sex acts with sex workers. Forced? Nigga, ain't nobody gotta force you to do nothing. Look at you. He even claims that Diddy groomed him for homosexual sex and facilitated for him to be sexually abused by actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Facilitated. He also you... claims that there are hours of... Right, hours. And look, to me that looks like Diddy with a grown woman. Which, if that's the case, that's not illegal. And on top of it, these sex workers, you do know that that's illegal. I mean, that's legal. Sex working in some places are illegal. They're called escorts. Freaking, but okay. Video footage. Let's go with it. Diddy's alleged crimes and misconduct. And according to Miss O'Markey, Jones taped this event with her. Yes. Where's the tape? Show us the tape. That's a lie. Also, just like you said, Stevie J was screwing a man to get him ready for Cuba when it's already been blown out the water. That that wasn't even Cuba Jude. That wasn't even Stevie J in the damn tape. Like strips of audio recordings. This man is this man Blackburn has been allowed to go to the courts and file frivolous fucking lawsuits. Uh, to try to do a money grab, period. Like, you shouldn't be able to just put any kind of shit in a lawsuit and it be filed, and then based off of that, here come the feds raiding your shit. Because that's what it's based on, and I'm sorry, but I believe the feds jumped the fucking gun on this one based on a frivolous-ass lawsuit. They got some kind of warrant based on what Lil Rodney said, all he had to do was show a picture to a judge and say, look, there's Stevie J, and he's screwing a guy, and Lil Rodney said so, and look, this is part of some sex trafficking shit, Your Honor, and we need to get a warrant to go get in here and, and do some shit. Now what? That ain't Stevie J in no video. Now what? The shit is crazy. And audio recordings purportedly show where you can hear kissing sounds. You can hear kissing sounds. That's not proof of shit. Oops. Her telling Combs not to touch her. That, her that ain't proof either because even if she said, don't touch me, well, how do we know he touched her after that? Come on, bro. This is. Julie asking about whether she was drugged. Now we Drugged? Have... She wasn't drugged apparently because she didn't fall out at all during the night of drinking her vodka. I haven't heard these tapes here on Law and Crime yet, but if they are what they purport to be, that is a huge 
piece of evidence. And remember, we're talking a civil case. And now you can say, sir, if they're not what it is assumed to be, that is a huge what? Fuck up. We're talking lawsuits. The burden of proof is much lower than a criminal case. It's just preponderance of the evidence. More likely than not that this happened. So the civil suit accuses Christian of assault, battery, sexual assault, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. There are uh, a big part of this lawsuit. She goes into the, the mental anguish that she has gone through, the emotional oh, yeah. harm that she has suffered. For the last two of years of not even working with them, you have just went through the mental, emotional anguish of being kissed on your fucking face and him touching your butt, I guess, apparently. That just caused you... The most, because that's all that fucking truly happened that we can even say if we're going to even say that fucking shit happened. Because we ain't see no bruises and no tapes and no hospital footage and ain't none of these niggas been charged of anything. It's important in order to prove This is crazy. Damages. And by the way, she is uh, claiming unspecified damages. Of course. So put a number amount on it. Right. But Diddy, let's go back to him. He is also named as a defendant. He is accused of aiding and abetting Christian's behavior. Right. As well as having premises liability because he was the leaseholder of the yacht. Now, uh, premises liability. Boy, they reaching, boy, ain't they? Premises liability. Because Diddy owned the boat. Diddy ain't have to be on the motherfucker. He ain't have to be around the motherfucker. He could have been in another goddamn country. But we still won't sue you, Diddy, because you own the boat. That fucking she decided to put her ass on and start working on and decided to drink her fucking shots of vodka on fucking this is a reach what he means that you have a duty to keep people on your property safe from injuries we actually what injury this this shit crazy we saw a lot of that same kind of theory in the Jones look at him lawsuit. i can't stand he this thing here boy she's a up that zone. happened at chalice studios and the owners and occupiers of that studio should just be as responsible as the people who allegedly engaged in that shooting that he was uh, present for. Right. Yeah. By the way. Basically, they're trying to say that <laughs> if I owned a grocery store and some crazy man came in there and shot one of my employees in the foot, I'm responsible for my employee and her bills and everything else because the fucking criminal came in there and did what he did. I've never heard of no shit like that before in my life. Fucking, that's, that has nothing to do with me. Freaking, I am not working in the store that day. I gave this nigga a job. And now my store gets robbed and that nigga gets shot. And I'm getting sued because he got shot in the store. Come on, man. Not sure if these new allegations could play a role in a future federal criminal prosecution of they won't We're talking so much about the boy, investigation that's crazy. It could be that this is just an isolated incident here and could not be part of a sex trafficking charge. Huh, sex Although trafficking. I do wonder that's if not this gonna Christian hold up. Combs incident or alleged incident could be part of a potential RICO or racketeering charge. As I mentioned on a previous sidebar, when I laid out potential charges that Diddy could face, if we are talking about conspiracy to violate the RICO statute, RICO organized crime. They're just trying to here. reach the and there was a criminal they enterprise. Just, they're just throwing shit at the wall and seeing if something will stick. Could be a stretch. Yes. Just something that came to my mind. Now, Miss O'Markey, her attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, said after this lawsuit was filed, quote, like father, like son, it gives us no joy or pleasure in filing. That slander. Like father, like son, you are slandering them, them people now. Because you don't know like father, like son, like shit. So that's slander. In this suit against Christian Combs, who has clearly adopted his father's pattern. He hasn't clearly adopted anything. You do not know what he's adopted or what he didn't adopt. See, see, see how this lawyer is wording this? Trying to act as if he knows for a fact that... Uh, Diddy's son did all this shit. Like, trying to make him seem like he's like Diddy. And how do you know how Diddy is? Like, you don't. Like, and practice of depravity. So far, there has been no response from Christian or his attorney. There shouldn't be. This lawsuit. But 
A little side note about Tyrone Blackburn, the what? attorney representing Listen Mr. Markey this. and Mr. Jones. Listen to this. United States District Court Judge for the Southern District of New York, Denise Cope, had some very harsh words for Mr. Blackburn and has even submitted a referral to the New York Federal Court Grievance Committee mm. claiming issues with Blackburn in five cases. Mm. In her order, she writes, quote, Significant resources have been spent by judges of the court and defendants named in actions he has filed to address glaring deficiencies in his filings. Mm. A referral to this court's grievance committee is warranted. Mm. Judge Cote goes on to write, quote, A reasonable inference from Blackburn's pattern of behavior is that he improperly files cases in federal court to garner media attention, mm. embarrass defendants mm. with salacious allegations, mm. and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Mm. She goes on to write, Indeed, his submissions to this court have been rife with disturbing allegations against the defendants and defense counsel. That's the, so the judge. The theme here is that he allegedly files lawsuits in the wrong jurisdictions and courts, and even allegedly called a defense attorney, quote, a disgusting racist. Wow. Now, this That's is a lawyer by Billboard.